Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today is Wednesday, June the 19th, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about SoFi today. We're going to view a video from Parkave uh, Tate Volsian. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. And uh, it's a decent video um, and uh, some of his thoughts on the SoFi stock, uh, the recent price action, uh, why the stock is down, his predictions. And um, while we're watching this, I'll chime in with my thoughts. Hey everyone, a lot has changed since I made my most recent SoFi stock price prediction for 2024. So in this video, I'll update my stock price expectations for SoFi by the end of 2024. I'll use earnings per share expectations for 2025. I'll use the forward price to earnings ratio and I'll combine them to create my estimate and assumptions for the range of outcomes possible for SoFi stock in 2024. So let's take a look. Okay. SoFi stock price currently trading for $6.41. It's down from over $9.60 where it started the year. In recent days, SoFi stock price has been dropped even further after a major investor lost the board seat and sold all of their shares. That selling pressure brought down SoFi stock price even further. To give some context, the seller that he's talking about, if you don't know, is the Qatari uh, Investment Fund. They owned about 2% of the company, I believe, around 20 million shares, um, which is a quite a material amount um, to be sold off within a very short period of time. Um, and the all-time high on the stock in the middle of me mania a few years ago was somewhere in the uh, $20 range, I believe. I'll discuss some of the other reasons causing SoFi stock price to fall a little bit later in the video when I discuss where I think the valuation will end in 2024. I'm also going to use SoFi Technologies forward price to earnings ratio. It's currently trading at the cheapest valuation it's been according to this metric going all the way back to early 2023. SoFi is currently trading at a forward price to earnings. Up. Now here, Parkev is looking at the uh, forward PE. Um, this is a company that has just turned profitable. Uh, it's, it's been um, at a loss for most of the time that it's been a public company. It's only the last two quarters that it's broken even. So when you're dealing with such a small amount of profits, it's kind of hard to analyze things from a, a PE basis properly. In the case of SoFi, you can look at it from a, from a PE perspective, maybe going forward because you're expecting to be profitable, but it's kind of hard to kind of like look back and say historical from a historical standpoint, uh, the company has been trading at a at a historically low PE because they've had like, like pretty much no earnings. So the, the PE ratio, as you can see, it's it's all wacky. So um, if you were to look at it um, from from another perspective, like the price to book or the price to sales, it's still giving you basically the same idea. Uh, back in 2021, it was trading at its like right about peak around May of 2021. It was trading at a 8.89 price to sales and a 4.28 price to book. You know, fast forward to now, and you're looking at a 2.76 price to sales. And a 1.17 price to book, which is you know fairly fairly decent, especially given the fact that the company is growing fairly rapidly. Of 29.47. Additionally, I'll need SoFi's earnings per share expectations for 2025, and you can see here the current estimate for SoFi's earnings per share estimates for 2025 is 24 cents. Per share. Now, these estimates are delivered by Wall Street analysts that are following SoFi stock. It could be a range of outcomes, and this is the consensus among those analysts that are following SoFi stock. Now, nobody knows the future, so it's not certain that this is precisely what its earnings per share will be next year, but this is the estimate from those that are closest following SoFi stock, the financial analysts that are closest. To SoFi, they've been following this stock. They have relationships with management. They participate in the conference calls. They have financial models. 
And so they've predicted that this is the range of outcomes. Now, you'll also notice that the earnings per share estimate hasn't changed by all that much in the last 90 days. The estimate was 25 cents 90 days ago, then it was 27 cents 60 days ago, then 30 days ago, it dropped to 24 cents and it's remained here for the last 30 days. So not very volatile in terms of the changes in earnings per share expectations, but the stock price has been volatile. So those two haven't connected. And the primary reason for that was that big sale I mentioned by one of the board members that lost the board seat and sold significant shares. I like those opportunities. When Again, he's referring to the Qatari Investment Fund because um, they had a board seat as well. Now, the other thing is uh, most recently, the CEO, uh, Anthony Noto, has also been been buying shares on a pretty you know constant basis. His shares, his purchases, you might think are you know not that big, uh, but his last one, for example, was two hundred thousand um, dollars. And two hundred thousand dollars for someone who makes a million dollars a year in salary is pretty significant. Um, you know, it's a couple months worth of of salary, basically, right or close to it. So. Um, you know, it, it is material and it's, there's only one reason they say why insiders buy a stock, but there's multiple reasons why they could sell. And Anthony Noto threw out almost every dip, major dip that the stock has had since it went public has been buying hand over fist consistently. And somebody sells their position and their exit creates a lower valuation. I like that as a reason to invest in a company. I like when the company I'm considering investing in becomes out of favor, unpopular, and set aside. That makes it more attractive because it brings down the valuation and increases the potential return. So now that I've put together the numbers that I will use to make the forecast, let's go ahead and look at the scenarios. If SoFi Technologies earnings per share does stay on trend for 24 cents per share by 2025 and the forward price to earnings stays at $29.47, I'm sorry, 29.5 times, then the stock price could rise to $7.07 by the end of this year. Now, the stock price is currently at $6.41, so that would be an increase of 66 cents. For okay, so you know, right at the top, um, I'm gonna say that these estimates, you know, they're good, they're they're but they are fairly conservative because these estimates that have been given out by the company, um, specifically, uh, SoFi has publicly stated that they expect to be at somewhere between 55 cents and 80 cents by 2026, and I assume that analysts are. Um, working with those numbers um, as well as some other data and kind of coming up with this 2025 EPS estimate. The thing is, with whatever projections that are being provided, there is nothing in that that incorporates any future products. And if you've listened to any of the fireside chats with Chris LaPointe, um, or even Anthony Noto, you know that there's full intention to roll out additional. Um, financial products, um, that, that it's going to be happening. But none of that is in the projections. So like this is really, really base-based case. Um, you know, furthermore, what we're looking at, like with these sorts of PEs that are being provided, um, I think w what you're looking at is a scenario where it kind of gets, it doesn't get any sort of valuation premium um, if the the technology side of the business really starts to take off. Right now, it's expected to grow at um, 20% for 2024, but it's also known that they're doing a lot of kind of good work behind the scenes as far as, you know, potentially signing contracts with some of the major banks. And some of that revenue, you see the, the sales cycles in, in like for the sort of technology business that they're um, technology technology solutions they're providing for 
uh, regional banks and for large banks um, as far as upgrading their infrastructure, these things take a while to actually implement. So the sales cycle on these sorts of things from the time that the product is uh, is sold, uh, which takes some time, uh, especially moving anything up the chain um, through a large corporation, as well as actually implementing a solution, that can be like a year and a half, a year and a half to two years, right? So, um, you know, like, like this is this is a very conservative um, um, projection, um, but like conservative is not is not bad at all. So I'm not trying to knock it with conservative. I'm just saying it's it's conservative. A little more than six months, more than 10% rate of return, which would be solid to be sure. However, if the forward PE were to increase to 32, then the stock price could rise to $7.68 by the end of the year. If the forward PE rises further to $8.40, I'm sorry, if the forward PE rises to 35, then the stock price could rise to $8.40. However, there is a downside scenario which could bring SoFi Technologies forward PE multiple down. And if it were to fall to 20, then the stock price could fall to $4.80, which would be down from $6.41 where it's currently trading at. And given the magnitude of the stock price decline off the high, I don't think SoFi stock investors would be devastated by that downside scenario. Now you might be asking, what would cause this downside scenario? And my primary reason that would cause this downside scenario is continued economic weakness in the US. I've already shared with you in previous videos that SoFi's portfolio of loans can... Okay, so that is a fair point. Um, but I have to also state that within the current stock price, and as most stock analysts would tell you, um, stock prices are also, there's also a future element built into the current pricing whenever you're looking at a stock price. And uh, it is my belief that within current uh, SoFi's current price, and also based on the conservative projections given by management, especially around their loan business, that recession is already built into the price, that they're expecting a slowdown. And so if that slowdown is confirmed, it's more, of a, it's more of a game of how bad is that slowdown relative to what they've uh, projected. If it's much worse than anticipated, there could be you know a move downwards, right? And if it's less than expected, then maybe, maybe it's actually a positive for the stock. So how the stock price would react to a slowdown is not necessarily obvious, right? And furthermore, the the lowering uh, the the uh, the coming of a recession could also mean lower interest rates, more uh, central bank rate cuts, and that would be good for the stock because then the market would be looking forward. It'd be looking forward to better economic times, right? And what could happen is that it could anticipate an expansion of their loan book and more revenue growth. So it might actually kind of, it could work out the way that he's saying if the recession is expected to be deeper and longer and bigger than expected, or it could actually even work out the complete opposite, especially if the central bank cooperates and cuts rates in a meaningful way. Consists primarily of personal loans which are quicker to default than other types of loans. I've also shared with you the rising delinquency rates for credit card payments in the US. They've been rising steadily. I've also shared with you that credit card balances are rising significantly near highest levels, near the record high levels in recent months. Also, the unemployment rate has been rising steadily. It's still very low, but it has been rising steadily. And the Federal Reserve has kept interest rates elevated up above 5% for some time now. So if all of those factors continue slowing economic activity and people start defaulting on their payments at a larger magnitude, then that would be hurtful to SoFi because it has billions and billions of dollars of personal loans outstanding. 
And so those will start to default at a higher percentage, and then investors would be less interested in owning SoFi stock in that scenario. So that's the downside scenario. That's what could bring the multiple down. But what would bring the multiple up? Well, that would be the opposite of that. That would be the economic activity kind of slowing down, but not getting much worse. And then the Federal Reserve has indicated they will cut interest rates. They will start cutting interest rates by the end of this year, at least once. And then they've indicated they would cut interest rates by four more times in 2025. And those lower interest rates could increase borrowing activity and economic activity and bring the economy in for a soft landing and then a return to growth. That would cause SoFi technology stock price multiple to expand and perhaps even higher than 35 in that scenario if it were to go just as planned like that and the economy were to reaccelerate and increase. But what's my base case? Where do I think is the most likely outcome for 2024? I would say somewhere with a forward PE between 30 and 35 and a stock price in the range of $7.25 per share to $7.95 per share by the end of this year, which would be a very nice increase to be sure. Now, things could be much better than I'm forecasting. Things. Okay, so um, Park have just sort of, you know, he kind of reiterated some of the points I made last. And uh, for the most part, I think he, he he's, he's kind of got it, got it right. Um, but I, I would say that, you know, again, with these estimates, uh, these EPS estimates that are being provided, SoFi notoriously, every single quarter, they beat the, and they raise their forecast. They are very conservative with their uh, future estimates. And I think w- when you're looking at the 725 to 795 range for 2024 or for the end of the year, you're looking at a fairly conservative estimate. Um, assuming there's no new announcements, there's nothing big, uh, um, no new products, and the environment is not particularly great. We don't have any positive, any major positive catalysts that that come by. This could be much worse than I'm forecasting. This is just my base case based on the numbers I have to consider using my estimates and assumptions. If you like the video, you... Well, that's it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my video. If you did, uh, p- please hit the like button, hit subscribe. And um, if you watched this long, uh, I'm happy that you did. Take care and have a great day.